I'm the boss lady. The Kelly Allen Show. Watch out, let's go. All about your life, her info's always tight. Talking just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling, and she's walking with the victory. The king is on her side, and she never quits. Put you on the show, and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly. Are you kidding this? I'm like this. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Kelly Holland Show. I am so grateful and delighted to have our guest on today. You would never, ever imagine how lucky we are to have this guest today. I have Mr. Emmy Award winner, musician and actor, and that's just a humble title for the lovely Harvey Morris. Thank you for being with us today, Mr. Morris. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Call me Harvey. I'm good. Thank I you. sure will. <laughs> <laughs> Your resume is extensive. I mean, that sucker can roll to the floor how long it is. Um, and I'm so grateful to even be here with you, knowing that you have so much experience. Um, very, very um, surprised when I learned that you did the remake of the National Negro Anthem. You guys know what I'm talking about. The lift every voice and sing. I can't sing it. So we're just going to Steve it, keep it right there. Lift every voice and sing. <laughs> um, Mr. Sorry, Harvey, <laughs> could yeah. you let our watchers know who you are other than what I just said and what it is that you've really done? Oh, well, my name is Harvey Morris. And um, first of all, I'm a child of the most high king. Yes. And I'm grateful. Um, I am a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a musician. I'm an actor. I'm a drummer. Um, and most of all, I'm just a person that loves doing what I do. And that, that is beautiful. You know, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> I mean, just, just, just go ahead and hit them in the head real quick with some of the things. Just, just throw out some big names so they can understand the magnitude of this meeting today. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, well um, uh, the, the most recent show that I worked on, um, I, I worked um, on the Mrs. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel show, season three. And um, I acted in there. And then I also was involved in The Greatest Showman. That was another uh, uh, movie I was involved in. Then uh, prior to that, I was also in another movie called Begin Again with uh, Kira Knightley and, and uh, uh, Mark Ruffalo. And, and The Greatest Showman, that was with Hugh Jackman. And uh, Big last. Yeah, yeah. So, and... Um, I worked with artists like Cameo and Freddie Jackson, uh, GQ. Uh, I did one hit with uh, Stevie Wonder. Mm. Um, worked with them. Um, well, there's a lot of artists I can't remember. But most of all, most of all, the greatest artist I'm working with is Skeet Jones. Skeet Jones in the building. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> listen, I'm working with Skeet Jones. I, I produce some music with Skeet Jones. So, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, Skeet doing some of the music that we did. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm glad you are excited. Um, Skeet, for those of you that have not had the pleasure, um, Skeet Jones is one of our new friends. He is um, represented by the lovely Jerry Royce. Batman is what I call him. Um, and they just <laughs> go around um, and, and just really um, bring happiness um, and education to um, youth and young adults um, through their puppet show. Um, Skeet Jones is one of my best friends. He got so much swag. He <laughs> I'm sad, I'm sad. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but he won't be my boyfriend. It's okay though. I'll get a text one day. <laughs> I tell everybody, Skeet don't like me like that. So, <laughs> so we no, he, he, not that he don't like you, he's just so busy. That's he's all. so busy. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. That's a great way of putting it. Um, you've been running this 
this marathon of your career for so long. Did you think that in the beginning um, you would be where you are now? Uh, the answer is yes. And the reason why I say yes is because, you know, the, the power of thought is, is very powerful. And as a kid, I remember when I was four years old, you know, I got my first drum set when I was two, but when I was four years old, um, I, I imagined entertaining, like, um, I'm, just, I'm deep myself, like the, the Jackson <laughs> Five and, and, and the Temptations and uh, um, groups like that. And I always wanted to entertain. And that has always been my life's, my life's goal and my life's journey. And um, I always imagined touring and being on big stages. And so I got that opportunity. So um, I actually, believe it or not, and I don't want to sound uh, uh, cocky because that's not it. You just asked me about my dream. Exactly. So I, I see myself going even further than where I am today. I'm grateful for where I am, but where, I, where I'm going is even greater than that. Oh, I love it. Praise God. Can you give us a little peek into that future? Just, just a, little, a little teeny peek. Okay, well, well, um, I already began to produce my own music videos, but I plan on producing my own movies. Mm -hmm. um, I already have my own record company. I'm already involved in education. Um, if you ever go to my website, which is toughstuffpro.net, you'll see that uh, my company is already organized in, in education. We do music production, we do video production. And so uh, I already have an Emmy I'm working on Grammys and, you know, Golden Globes and you know, Oscars and things of that nature. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing you. <laughs> um, you know, your production, uh, Tough Stuff Productions, LLC. Um, I really like how you take the time to make your business work. Um, no business can work without those fees being raised. Um, but then you also have your Beats and Rhymes education. Um, where yeah. you're just in the schools and it's all about leadership and work ethic and problem solving and most importantly collaboration. Um, yes. I, I think that's amazing. Um, is this a nonprofit? Um, well, well, Beats and Rhymes is not a nonprofit yet. I'm working on making it a nonprofit. However, um, I, I, I make it affordable for you know our young people. It's important that. Um, we place, princi we place principle and people before profit. Absolutely. And, 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 profit and, comes. And I'll explain that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, profit and, comes. Because, Go ahead. Yeah. But see, you see, here's the thing. Um, I, I would like to do a nonprofit, but it comes with a whole nother set of responsibilities and things of that nature. And, and quite frankly, to be honest with you, the only reason why I haven't done a nonprofit is because it's a longer process. You know, and, and um, I, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm in the process of making it a nonprofit. But today, it, you know, it's a profit business. But it's about the young people. It's about, uh, um, again, placing our people before profit. What I mean is that um, what we do in the Beats and Rhymes program is teach life skills. But we use music. And, and the business of music to teach those life skills. It's mm -hmm. important that our young people know that we're in a time and in an age where we have to do business. We have to do business. And doing business is not just saying, oh, well, you know, I have a product, I'm gonna sell it. Yes, that's cool. But you need to understand about your numbers. You need to understand about projections. You need to understand about, uh, um, um, uh, your goal and goal setting. You need to understand what all of these um, important uh, uh, aspects of, of, of doing business, having relationships and how one small relationship can lead to a, a bigger relationship, which leads to bigger relationships. You know, so all of those things are absolutely important in, in what we do. 
All right. Um, I really like to hear the services that you offer. Um, but I also help people set up their small businesses and nonprofits. Um, and so I mentioned it specifically because of the LLC formation. Um, you would definitely need to be converted to an incorporation, which isn't a hard process. It's just a paperwork process. Um, but because you're not offering a product, but a service and it's catered towards youth, um, and you're also teaching life skills and those other skills necessary, um, I would be happy to help you set up your nonprofit um, because that way you can get the donations to keep it rolling. Anybody that already pays a service fee, um, that I know that money is transitioning right back into the business, which is what a nonprofit is all about. Um, staffing and all of that, pay yourself first, of course, but we're not going to take the majority of the funds. We're going to put them back into the nonprofit so we can continue with the, the, the projects that you're doing and the services that you're offering to the youth and young adults. Um, it, you get these donations. Um, that could also help you further your mission um, with a 5013C uh, formation. Um, and so I would be happy to help you. Um, if you want to move forward into that, I do it all day long. Um, it's yeah. not expensive. Um, and with under $1,000, you would have a nonprofit. Okay. I accept. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's just another way that... Uh, Mommy over here is trying to make some extra income. Um, I told my son, I said, I got one hand down. I'm working on my other hand, son. And he was like, okay, all right. How many streams of income you need, mom? I said, listen, we going to ask me that question again in a few more years. I said, I'm working on my toes. <laughs> so, oh, hey, hands hey. and toes. I need at least 20 income streams. Um, and I say that because I'm a single parent, not by choice, but by divorce, as one of my previous guests has said. Um, and so I find this new place of life very rude rewarding um, because I'm able to do things that I never thought was possible. And I say that to segue over to you, even though you had this dream, did you really think everything that you've been doing right now would really be possible? Like all of the movies and the music and the transition into these new experiences? Um, I believe that they could happen. I just didn't know how they were going to come. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, again, each relationship, each relationship led into something else. Like how I got into movies, I've always wanted to be in movies. I imagined being in movies, but it came in a un most unlikely way. How so, so? Okay, well, I'll, I'll explain. I I'm a musician. I've always been a musician. Um, I worked in a wedding band, okay? And one of the, 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 my fellow colleagues in the wedding band also worked in movies. And one particular day, the, one of the super music supervisors for the first movie I worked on, they were looking for a drummer that looked like a bodyguard. And he says, oh man, I think I got the, 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 the perfect person. So uh, he, he recommended me and they went to my website. And that's why it's important to always have a website, have okay. a social presence, social media presence. Exactly. Went to my website and after going to the website, they saw my picture. They asked me to come and read that Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon, they would call me and say, hey, you're in, you have the movie. And then from there, that very same relationship from the movie allowed me to be in the, 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 um, the post two projects that I've been involved in. Congratulations to you, brother. I know it was nothing but a journey, and I'm grateful that you were able to share it with us. Do you contribute any um, religious faith and hope to your progress? All the time. All mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my motto is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. That's good. But understand, but understand that to whom much is given, much is required. Okay. All right. And understand and, and also know that in James 1, it says, you know, when we, we go through trials and, tri and tribulations of many kinds, but the, the, that trial and, and tribulation is going to produce perseverance. And that yes. perseverance is going to produce that, though, that thing that you need in order to be successful. So, you, you know, my whole, my whole foundation is based in the word. So, yeah. That's why. Shout out to you. I'm the same way. Um, had a goal. My original goal was just to be a speaker. 
had no idea that through conversation I would get connected to Batman um, or Jerry Boyce, my producer. Um, and then I started doing podcasts. Okay, I thought I was going to be in front of a different type of audience, um, a live audience, um, maybe small at first that may grow over time. You know, I'm just trying to plan it out. And um, God had another path for me. Um, he provided the resources. He made the connections. He provided the network. And I just had to be willing um, do you find that you're able to do the same thing just by being willing and available? Listen, you put me to the door, I'm walking through it. In fact, I'm going to kick the door open. I'm walking through the door, okay? Listen, because... Hey, when I, 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 I say it all the time. People get to the door, won't even knock. I said, I'm going to kick that sucker down. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> because, because, because you know what? The word says, go boldly before the throne. Yes, sir. And, and, and what does that what that means is not just going to the throne of God, but also going through the throne of greatness. Hallelujah. And in order to go through the throne of greatness, we got to be willing to step up and step in. Amen. Praise just, God on that. Hold on. No, don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Look, this is not a typical Christian platform, but I will never hide my faith. Okay, I will never hide my faith, especially when I get into a good vibe with somebody. I say, "Oh, it's a saint Come over on. here, Lord. It's a saint Come over on. here." <laughs> I love to worship. Shout out to my home church. We open back up July 11th. I can't wait. All right. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's an interesting thing because my home church, we don't actually, I'm in New York, right? Well, I'm I'm in New Jersey, but my, my home church is in New York and we're not opening up until September, maybe late August. Mm -hmm. But in my church, um, you know, because I, I, I believe in um, taking our talents and multiplying them. So, you know, in my church, uh, I'm the drummer. But I also do sound. I also do lighting, and now I'm I'm putting together the whole video uh, uh, um, uh, produ uh, production and, uh, and video podcast. And, well, not podcast, but you know we have Zoom and stuff like that. So you know I'm putting that whole thing together. I love doing that stuff. That's why one of the reasons why brother Jerry Royce and I we get along so well. Because that brother, he's no joke. That brother, I mean, he's got a whole whole television studio, whole radio studio. I'm yes, like, that's that's what it's all about, you know? And so, you know, it's important that as people, we connect with other people that are like-minded, you know? Yes, and in that, you know, we, it's, not a, it's never ever about anything other than connecting, growing and learning and nurturing each other and, and, and lifting each other up. It's all about that. That's what it's all about. I couldn't agree with you more. And that right there is the greatest commandment to love. All right. To, love. <laughs> to right. love, to love. Love comes in many forms, especially when it's not an intimate love. It comes in many forms. Sometimes it's just simply kindness. OK, that's right. So, <laughs> that's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. That is completely right. Um, when you when were you were you approached to remake the Negro National Anthem or was that just a project you worked on that just took off? Well, no, I wasn't approached. I did it on my own. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did it on my own is because I really got upset with the fact that as a people, we don't even know our own anthem, some of us. We know we the don't. first stanza. Mm -hmm. We don't know the second nor the third. Nope. Right? And so, <laughs> uh, right. And, and, and so it, it's important that we not only um, know that first answer, but but know the whole, the whole, the reason for that song, and then also know how, know it all. We have to know it all. So for my remake was so that we can learn it all, and hopefully you know people can connect with it, and and really understand and identify with those lyrics, and um, make it happen. That's what it's all about. You know, it's about forward progress, and that's what you know lift every voice and sing is about. You know, coming together, but making forward progress. I like that very much so. Um, do you find um, the opportunities that you receive um, in the music world to be similar? No, here's the question I wanted to ask. Do you find the business um, to be the same in the music industry as it is in the movie industry? Uh, the business is, com I won't say completely different. There's certain aspects like bookkeeping and and doing your numbers and budgeting, that's the same, but um, movies are actually on a larger scale. You know, it's unfortunate that the way the music industry has been going, 
um, I, I think, I, I, I don't want to say that it's deteriorating, but it's in, in its present form. It's, you know, it's taking a whole nother, it's taking a shift. And, and that shift has um, created not necessarily the most pleasant for new and upcoming artists. You know, went from, you know, actually the music business went from actually selling CDs or albums and stuff like that. Now you're streaming. And unfortunately, you know, the general public doesn't realize that, yes, you have access to more music, but it short changes the artist overall. Really? Yes. So let, let, let me explain. So um, back in the day when you would download a, 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 a MP3 or something like that or, or purchase a song, a greater portion of that would go to the artist. With, with streaming, you get less than a penny per stream. So for an artist, in order to even get a penny, an artist would have to stream, uh, a song would have to stream maybe six or seven times just to get a penny. Wow. Yeah. So that's why they have millions and millions of views and things of that nature. Exactly. Wow. So yeah. I heard, wow, wow, wow. I heard there's this, and, I, and forgive me for not knowing the real term, but something like a robocaller type of thing where they'll just Fox, automatically. The yes. So they'll just automatically play and play and play, but is that how artists get their numbers up, even though they may be superficial? Well, well, here's yeah, they get their numbers up, but they're unreal numbers, and so therefore you have the algorithms that they recognize that they are bots, and so what ends up happening, like a Spotify, they will, you know, change their algorithm every so often, and and so therefore, you know, that bot that was set up really is not actual numbers, and so therefore it minimizes the the moment you start streaming. See, here's the thing. What, what, what the general public doesn't know is that when you, you subscribe to a company, the, the streaming company that you're subscribing to is getting the lion's share of the money. So yes, you have access to all of this music, but it's really not going, it, it's, it's unfairly going to the streaming company and not the artist that you believe you're supporting. So I would say that a music. streaming company would pay for some type of rights to even play the music. Oh no, they do pay rights. There, there, there are there are rights, but the portion by which they pay out is far less than what's due the artist. That's that's terrible. Um, yes, it is. It does is. this make um, does this does that type of methodology um, convert more um, musicians into the life of acting? Um, just well, well, I, <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna tell you. I think the reason why many musicians convert to acting is because the money is better, the treatment is better, um, the just there's a, a, a greater and better experience in doing movies than you do and have music. However, me personally, as a musician, I love music. I love doing what I do. You know, um, I've, I've done what I've done for free. I'm not trying to do it for free no more. But okay. I've done, <laughs> I've done I've done it for free, but you know, if we're at a place, you, you get to a certain place in life where you go, you know what, Lord, I thank you. And the word says that your talents will make room for you. You know, and the word yeah. also says that a man is also worthy of his keep. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and so therefore, when, when, <laughs> okay, because <laughs> we have to recognize and, and this is the other thing i'm going to say it is important for us to have our businesses and it's important that our businesses grow and make money so that we can empower other businesses and other people that that represent what we do and who we are and see and with that empowerment comes uh, um, leverage because i i mean i'm, I'm not going to make this uh, a race thing because i don't want to do that but we as the narrative, we have to dispel that narrative that, you know, black folks can't do business or, or things of that nature. We have to completely dispel that narrative because it's, it's not right. It's not right. It's not accurate. You know, you're going to, in business, you're going to get folks of many different nationalities who will do right. And then you're going to get folks who will do wrong. And that doesn't matter 
what your nationality is. Or, 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 you know what I'm saying? You just got to learn how to identify folks who know how to do business and let's do business. Amen. Amen to that. The, oh, I hate poor leadership. So <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Just like, well, for what? You're an idiot and I know. So, so yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm not for everybody. <laughs> so, but, um, <laughs> but I'm for somebody. So there we go. Um, it's right. been such a joy talking to you today, Mr. Harvey Morris. Um, we are nearing the end of our show. Um, so this is your opportunity to lead folks to your website and to any other projects that you have available okay. right now. Plug away, sir. Especially okay. Do you wait a minute? Do you make more money if more people watch your show? Yes. Okay, yes. plug away. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, listen. Please, I'm, I'm going to say, first of all, you can go to uh, uh, Tough Stuff Productions, LLC, and uh, go to my website, which is toughstuffpro.net, and you get an opportunity to see what Tough Stuff Productions does. You can also go to our YouTube page, which is Tough Stuff Pro LLC. I'm sorry, Tough Stuff Productions LLC. Go to our YouTube page and, and click away at the music that's there and click away at our, our videos that's also on there. Um, also, you can find us, find Harvey Morris in the House of Praise because I produce gospel music. You can find us on Apple Music. You can find us on uh, Amazon. Uh, you can find us on Spotify. But when you go to Apple Music, uh, go, go to iTunes and download the music. And you can also come to my website, toughstuffpro.net, and go to my music page and download our music because it's important. If you really want to support what we do as artists, if you really want to support what artists do, go to their website and download their music directly. I'm, I'm not just plugging myself, I'm talking about all artists. All, most artists have a web page. Go to their web page, go to their, their website, and download their music directly if you want to support the artists because that's where the artists will make their money. So you want to support me? Come on, come to my website, tellstuffpro.net, and come get that money. Yay, hey, 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 hey. In order for me to give back, I gotta get that something to give. All right, come on now, come on. Uh, and, and let me see. Uh-uh, you yeah. just go back to regular. <laughs> now, the other thing I want to say, hey, 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 listen, I want to say, you definitely support Kelly Holland's show. Definitely support Jerry Roy's live because, hey, there's power in this hour. Yes, God. Feel the power. <laughs> it's bad Feel the power. <laughs> <laughs> um, and don't forget about Skeet Jones. Don't forget about Skeet Jones. Because I got, I got music coming with Skeet Jones. And Skeet Jones, I'm telling you, he's going to tell you, throw up your hands and wave. I'm just trying to let you know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, it's been such a joy to have you here. Thank you for sharing the business. Thank you for sharing your life. Thank you for your um, inspirational comments. Um, it's been definitely an encouragement um, to have had you in my presence. My spirit is filled with joy and determination. I think I should go do more work when we get off of this interview. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> which is always appropriate. Um, people say, you ain't gonna do it. I got plenty to do. I'm just not doing it. But <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> so, so um, but glory be to God that there's always an opportunity and availability to continue his work, to bring more sheep to the flock, to call upon those that may not be listening. No, you are welcome. You have always been welcome.